Hey, what's up? And welcome back to another episode of Hops Geek News, a comic book podcast that also discusses movies, TV shows, and we feature a beer of the week. I am one of your two co-hosts, Matt. Alongside me is Lauren. In today's episode, we are going to talk Gen V, which is the upcoming Amazon Prime TV show set in the boys universe. There were about a seven issue comic book run. So we're going to go ahead and discuss part of that here today. But first things first, if this is your first time listening, go to Hops Geek News on any podcasting platform, any social media platform. Give us a follow subscribe all that stuff that's how the podcast grows and then if you feel so inclined to support the show patreon.com slash hops geek news that is how you can support the show and everything that comes to us goes right back into the the show the beer we drink the comics we read the comic cons we attend all of that good stuff and of course we like to drop episodes early for you send little care packages and things of that nature and also you can catch us on nerd initiative where every week we are part of the nerd initiative bullpen dropping very good comic book reviews for all of your favorite comic books we get to talk about these things, and it's a lot of fun. Anyways, we like to talk about what we've been reading or watching, what we're drinking this week, give you the news, and then, of course, we go into our main topic. And the beer this week is one that Lauren sent. It is from Family Business Beer Company out of Austin, Texas. This is also Jensen Ackles Brewery. Heads up, Supernatural fans. He's also Soldier Boy in the Boys Universe. It is Golden Age, which is a German-style Pilsner coming in at 4.9%. Out of that brewery, we brew quality beer made for quality time. Beer has a way of bringing people together, and we believe it's best when shared, whether it's the family you were born into or the one you choose to gather around the table with. Scooch down. There's a seat for everybody. This beer specifically won the silver medal in the 2019 Great American Beer Festival, and uh, GABF just wrapped up this week. So, Yes, and they actually won a gold for one of their beers. What? And I, I should pull it up while we're recording because it sounded like a supernatural themed beer. Like it was like graveyard dirt or something like that. I, if I keep guessing, I'll just That's get wronger and wronger. I'm very disappointed. I well, you might be disappointed because I think it's a spicy stout. Ew. If you want to uh, go ahead and get into our next segment, I can look it up. Yeah. So what we've been reading or watching, man, I have been reading nothing really. Actually, I've read something. So something is killing the children. Issue 33 has just released this past week. I read that. It's building up to the crescendo of this current story arc in that universe. And if you haven't read it yet, I highly recommend, you know, James Tidian, Werther Deladera, they do really great stuff in this comic book. It's one of the most popular comic book runs out there right now. Netflix will be making the show for it. And then I've also read Stranger Things and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles issue number three of the six run short. Oh my God. They're already on three. I haven't even read yes. two. Oh my it's, goodness. It's excellent. Honestly, uh, this is a really fun comic book series. The art has really taken it, like stepped it up a notch, not to mention, and it's by IDW and Dark Horse. They kind of collabed on this, of course, because one is owned by the other. And man, it's it's really, really good. I highly recommend checking that out. There were some other comic books that came out this week I haven't picked up yet. Predator versus Wolverine 1 is out. Have not picked that up yet. And then Wonder Woman issue 1 from Tom King is out. Also haven't had a chance to pick that up yet. It's been crazy in my household, so I'm slacking on the... Uh, oh, yeah, you finally have a house. You're getting I do, settled. And it's put together and all that stuff. So I haven't had time to really go out to the comic book store and pick anything up. I did get to go to an Oktoberfest at Precarious Beer Project yesterday, which mm, if anybody fine. happens to be in the Virginia area, uh, they do a nerd night every Thursday night at the brewery where there's like video game contests from the 90s. They do board game uh, competitions all that good stuff. And they have an arcade in there. So if you happen to be in the Williamsburg area, definitely check that brewery out. And then aside from that, Ahsoka, of course, which we have two episodes left. It's the best Star Wars show that I've personally laid my eyes on, in my opinion. And uh, you can actually check me this week talking Ahsoka with, um, actually, I'm on Metalcore Nerds hosting that show for Sean. So you can check it out. Go ahead, Metalcore Nerds, follow that. And then aside from that, Only Murders in the Building, which has a couple episodes left as well. This season's great because you honestly don't know who did it. There's... Fake like outs. I never do. Yeah, I mean, I feel like sometimes it's a little more telegraphed than the other seasons, but this season I legit have no idea because the obvious choices I feel like are too obvious. And so they've done a really good job as far as the writing goes. And uh, yeah, so aside from that, what have you been reading or watching? And then also, what is that beer that won? Okay, so the beer that won, <laughs> I just lost it. Ah, there we go. Chilies from the Grave. So it's a peppered variation of Ashes from the Grave. And it took home a gold medal. And they said, uh, huge congratulations to the brilliant mind behind it, who is their head brewer, Cosmo Soren. Tino, you're the best dude, which I believe he's the new head brewer because the last oh, wow. one, Nate, was friends with um, Rob. Robin Keeley from Woodland Empire. So that's super awesome. Uh, no pun intended. Because it's like you hear this brewery, and I think that they've done very successful 
in huge part to Jensen being one of the owners. I mean, they post a picture of yeah. him and everybody goes crazy. They have way more followers they than they should. This whole fact, yeah. Right. But to see them get credit for the beer I makes me happy. Yeah. They're not just one of those celebrity breweries. Cause you know, if you look yeah. at a lot of celebrities, musicians, they have their own brand of whiskey or wine and, you know, and the name is, that. is selling it. Not the, exactly. not the actual quality. Well, and when I went there, when they first said the beer in there and I was like, I think that's his brewery. And I looked it up on untapped and I was like, it's not highly rated. And then when I didn't have high expectations, like doing the beer occasion in, in Austin, I knew the beer was going to be better at pint house pizza and other places. Right. But then when I had it, I was like, Oh, this is actually better than I expected. And then hearing that their beer is consistently getting better in the area, you know, kudos to them. I'm looking forward too, to opening the, my yeah. barrel aged one. This, uh, I'm not a big fan of Pilsners. Anybody who knows me, like Pilsners aren't my thing, but uh, this actually is a really good Pilsner. Honestly, it's really light, crisp. It's a German Pilsner. That, uh, you're lucky we chose for this episode. Otherwise, if I had a six pack of this, I would have sat on the porch during this tropical storm and just drank it all day on the porch while watching that rain. And it's a really, really crushable beer. It's delicious. Yes. And I love just the, you know, German style. Anything has that oh, yeah. distinct German taste. Um, but I did do Horror Nights this week. Oh, so How was that? Tell us. Uh, it was a lot of fun. We went on Thursday. It's just gotten insane, though, because you have to pay God, to skip lines the lines. Awful. So we did not do the Stranger Things line. We The first line we did was The Last of Us, and The Last of Us took almost an hour and a half. And so all yeah. the other houses were under an hour, except Stranger Things kept getting. And, and we were all like, Stranger you know. Stranger Things was probably, what, two and a half, three hours? I wasn't even paying attention. Other people were. It was just kind of one of those, like, we all wanted to do it, but we preferred not to wait in line so we did a bunch of other houses well, and then the next day we're like oh ticket. we should have done it yeah, yeah i mean but, but there's the thing is you spend all that money on ticket and then you're trying to enjoy it feels like waiting in lines for three hours kind of kills the vibe of the whole thing in my opinion because then it's just like i don't know that's my i mean that's my take on it we still we got beers before we got in every line right. and you know we didn't have kids with us and that was kind of our mentality but then you know by the end of the night we're like Everybody wants to do it next year. We're riding in the high of Horror Nights. But next year, you know, we're spending the $8 million to skip the lines because, but that's what they've done now. It's like all these, they've created these long lines because people pay to skip them now. Disney does it. They all do it. So it's like, you want to be like, no, I'm not going to do that. But you have to. It really backs the lineup too, even more than it used to, because you stand there and they let every single person who's, you know, I get it. You pay that extra money, like lightning pass, whatever it is. But at some point, they just keep letting and letting and they don't even move the main line any. And so it's just kind of like, right. what are we doing? Like there was a point where I'm like, I don't think we've moved in 10 minutes. I mean, we're, you know, playing heads up and we're still having a great time, but, but the, it's you know, the scare zones, it, no, it wasn't that bad on Thursday, but I mean, I also, the, the cold or the, the hot doesn't bother me anyway. I'm the opposite of, of Elsa. Elsa. Uh, but no, it, it, just being there in the scare zones and, you know, you you have the beers, which are like $13 plus tip everywhere. <laughs> the beer wasn't bad. They had a legit Oktoberfest. They always have their Dufftoberfest this time of year. And they had like the Ecto Cooler. If you like sours, oh, yeah, yeah. it's a decent sour. I think it's Voodoo Brewing. So they had that. So it was it was a, a not terrible beer selection. And they had some fun food. Like they had a Cordyceps corn dog that Josh got. Um, they had Surfer Boy pizza. I took a bite of the outside because I don't eat hot dogs. And it was actually really good because it was like truffle stuff on the the corn dog was that like cordyceps hot dog was that like mushrooms on it it didn't have mushrooms on it but i think it had like a truffle thing it was it was not the outside that i tried was not bad uh they did have surfer boy pizza so i had surfer boy pizza when we got there i want to crush that too <laughs> so it was just really cute and it was, jess was fun to be there sending me videos when she went uh earlier in the week i think it was jess was sending me videos and she tried like facetiming me at one point but i missed it all <laughs> And uh, I was like, shout out to Jess because she said she was going to do it. I totally forgot she said it. And then she legit followed through. I was like, oh, I thought she was joking. But she when she goes balls to the wall, when she goes, she oh, buys yeah. like top tier. Time. So she's really because she only has universal and she only has one kid. So they have like top tier. And so I went with her to she's like, I'll drive. I get the, the valet included in my pass. And I'm thinking, OK, whatever. This can't be that exciting. She where they pull up for the valet. If you have like the VIP annual pass, you skip that whole. So you still go through security, but you skip the main security. You skip that whole long walk on the conveyor belts. They drop you off right in front of Bubba Gump. And I was like, holy shit, this is amazing. It's legit VIP. Yeah. So and so when she does that too, like she pays to skip the lines and and her son's birthday is in September. So that's usually their birthday oh, celebration. Sense, yeah. yeah. 
So, um, and she had plans. She couldn't come with us because she was going to a concert, but, yeah, but it was a lot of fun, but it is a lot of money. It is. I'm and doing hollow scream at Bush gardens this coming Saturday. So I'll have I to see how that either. holds up. Cause I've only ever been to Bush gardens one time and that was in Tampa and it was not during Halloween season. So. Right. I've done both Bush gardens, but I've never done hollow scream. Yeah, We've heard good things. I'll report back. Yes. We look forward to that. So what have I been reading or watching you ask? Um, I don't remember Ahsoka. That's been great. Uh, I scoop. Okay. There we go. Yes. Ahsoka. I watched Shazam finally. Oh, what'd you think about that? It was fun. These movies are kid movies and it was really fun. And I very much so enjoyed it. It's, and, it's uh, not a bad movie. Like Shazam isn't a bad movie. I feel like there's a couple things like the wonder woman forced cameo where she clearly was not on set with anybody else was like, all right, whatever. But yeah, that was not, interesting. It's very just like kid. It's like blue beetle. People slept on blue beetle and blue beetles a really good movie too. I haven't still haven't seen that you one. Gotta watch that I have one. like a list of movies. Digital this watch. Week. I haven't watched Ninja Turtles either. And well, Barbie's on digital and Josh hasn't seen that. So I'm looking forward to rewatching that with him. I got it all on Plex. But there was the scene where the, the Lucy Lou was like riding a dragon. And I was like, oh, oh yeah. my God. I'm like thinking Khaleesi in my head. And then Shazam's like, all right, Khaleesi. I was like, <laughs> yes. But no, I liked it. Um, as a meeting I've been doing, there's a comic. I don't know if I mentioned it, but I did write a co- the last two reviews for Nerd Initiative called Click, Click, Boom that I've really been liking. It's like a, a mystery with this young girl who uh, communicates with Polaroids, but is on a murder spree for revenge. What? And it's we've got a lot of like little twists and turns and I'm really enjoying it. So I got to it's only up to issues four. So I just wrote the review for four. And uh, yeah, that's that's a fun one to check out. Image Comics. And it uh, does really image just like the murder horror history stuff really well. Like they are top notch because I've been reading like the Enfield gang by them. And that's like just top, top notch stuff from from what they do all the time. So if people are really big in a horror, especially this time of year, and mm-hmm. you don't read something from image like fix that. Trust me. Right. My house is spooky now. So I got a couple of spooky books lined up. And one of the things I did at Horror Nights uh after watching Good Omens, I'd been wanting to read the book. And while I was drunk in line at Horror Nights, I ordered it and completely forgot until I got home. And there was, a, I was like, what did I order? What package is this? Oh, yeah. So I have Good Omens now. Ooh. Well, I, I do remember you you posting that in the Discord and being like, I got yeah. this. And I know there's some people watching that. I, I still haven't watched that show at all. Definitely need to. You got to rewatch one, though. That's fair. You You definitely do. So is that all you've kind of been up to? Yeah, other than that, I've just had Supernatural on all week. That's fair. I've uh, I have just about. I think I finished season seven, but I don't remember the finale, so I have to go back and rewatch the finale. We are in the little Leviathans. I have met Charlie, so I have been re- watching that. And uh, I don't know why people hate the Leviathan storyline so much so far. Like, I don't have an issue with it, but I guess I'll find out the more I watch, apparently. No, I don't understand it because, like, I can understand not liking the Leviathans in general, fine. But that season is not just about them, and there's some fucking awesome episodes in that season yeah i uh i truly don't understand anyways let's go into some news the percy jackson trailer has released that's going to be coming out this november and i really the trailer is promising i hope they do it justice the whole cast is like this is very faithful to the books so i am very much on board like i read the books i was very impressed by the book i liked the books and of course the movies that came out were nothing like it and it was crap and so hopefully this comes out better uh, TMNT Mutant Mayhem is obviously now streaming on Paramount Plus. Blue Beetle is getting ready to also come out on streaming. And aside from that, the the word on the street is that the writer strike m- might be ending here anytime now because they're talking really about so. the writers have met with AMTP for about three or four days straight now. They are just hammering out the fine details apparently of the deal. So hopefully any day now we're going to see an end to the writer strike and then followed by that, the actor strike, because it's been like a hundred and God, I think it's been 144 days or something like that now. And right. it's been a long time. And I think another big driving factor for the AMTP is the fact that the fiscal year is about to be done. And so they're looking for those fourth quarter, like, Oh, when you really need to get going because now you're at the point where, Everything next year, 2024, like there's delays. They're going to start losing more money. So hopefully they give the writers a fair shake, you know, then all that works out. Because also the Batman part two is allegedly supposed to start filming November 6th in London. Again, not really sure. They they must something. They must be very optimistic. Hopefully I'm very optimistic. I'm hoping 
However, when it comes to people like uh, Zaslav and, you know, Bob Iger and all them, I'm not really, they're just idiots, but more to, more to become from that. And then my last bit of news is that the Avengers Code Red, which is a new Lego special, is coming to Disney Plus on October 27th. So if you want to get your fill of Avengers and Lego at that, go ahead and check that out. What kind of news do you got? Uh, so Loki season two has moved up to October 5th at 9 p.m. Eastern. This seems to be their new thing rather than dropping it in the middle of the night. Uh, the Simpsons season 34 is coming to Disney Plus on October 11th, and there wow. will be a new Treehouse of Horror. I don't even know anybody like not to I knock the Simpsons at all. Like I loved the Simpsons growing up. That's still watching the Simpsons. Exactly. Who's keeping this show alive? I don't I, know. I don't have a hate against the Simpsons. I never quite like attached myself to it, I guess. But I, I mean, I watched it a ton as a still kid actively because nobody has cable anymore. Speaking of run real quick, let me interject. Amazon is raising their prices because they're rolling out an ad tier option. And so if you have prime video, you're going to start getting ads. Otherwise you can pay extra. And at this point, like all the streaming services are just pricing us all out. Like there's no, People are starting to cut. I don't know what to say about it at this point. That has already been said. It's just fucking stupid. It's just ridiculous, too, because it's like somebody, you know, they're talking about charging for Twitter and somebody's like, well, if you can't afford a couple dollars, da, 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 da. it's not that you can't afford a couple dollars. It's that everything is a couple dollars now. That's what I'm saying. And it's like, I just yeah, canceled my Spotify because they increased the price and I'm already dreading having to listen to the because there's like a commercial every two songs on there. And I'm probably just going to end up doing it again. But I actually canceled it when they upped the prices. And then we ended up driving to Maine the next day. Oh, so I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, how likely are you to come back? I'm like, definitely not. Next day, I'm back. Well, like, it wouldn't be so bad if they weren't now also cracking down on password sharing. So it's like you literally have no choice because, yeah. God forbid, you know, you share your password to save money because the economy is out of control and wages have stagnated. And I can go on and on and on. But this is not a political news podcast. <laughs> Right. We're going to talk about the economy I'll and interest the rates. Motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are big on, you know, there's a couple ones we always have, but we're big on the let's have this while Ted Lasso is on and cancel it. So yeah, I feel like more thing. people are going to start doing that that haven't been doing Especially that. Especially if like Star Wars and Marvel are going to start rolling back content. I can see people even canceling Disney Plus. So we just... That. But it's cheaper if you pay the full year, so we just do that. That makes sense. I, I can't imagine that. not having Disney Plus at this point. I'd have to be dusting off some DVDs then. But again, like that's why I have something like Plex, but never mind. Right. And I can't imagine having Netflix just for Supernatural. God, thank God just Netflix is paid DVDs. for by T-Mobile because... Same here. I wouldn't pay for Netflix because I don't watch enough on it. But I've had Netflix since like 2005. And Hulu has rolled into my Spotify. Otherwise, I would never watch Hulu either. I'd be canceling that as well. All right. So what other news do I have? Barbie is now the highest grossing movie of 2023. Good for them. Daniel Radcliffe looks like he's going to be in the new is Deadpool 3 confirmed? movie. Um, I don't know that it's confirmed, so I'm going to still look at it as speculation, which is kind of what okay. I'm looking at for Sounds all like the Deadpool 3 casting. News? It looks like he's supposed to be Xavier in the Earth 420 version. I hope the Earth 420 version is very high. Is your beer already gone? Just about. <laughs> These go down quick. Luckily, my fridge is right next to me now. And then my last piece of real news, not speculation, is a Goosebumps series coming to Disney Plus and Hulu on October 13th. I'm excited for this. However, they have... So, did you ever read Goosebumps at all? Fuck yeah, I read Goosebumps okay. and Fear Street. One thing I remember from Goosebumps is how vibrant the colors were. And watching the trailer, I was a little like... They really dulled everything a bit. Oh, they're that making means, it like creepier? Well, I don't even know if it's that. It's just I'm, that might just be like a minor nitpick. Like, why are you seriously complaining about this? You 30, almost 33 year old man. Cause I turned 33 two days after this, but it's like, <laughs> maybe you just need to increase the brightness on your TV. I don't know. Maybe I guess, but I'm really excited for the Goosebumps series because Goosebumps was my favorite. Every time there was a book fair, if kids still know what that is out there, I bought no, they have them, but they like, That's true. I was at the book fair the other day with my kids. Yeah. I literally would buy like five or six goosebump books and rl stein was like my life growing up and like my gateway drug into horror so we might have to do a goosebumps episode i'd be down for that you know what we're gonna drop a goosebumps episode for that week because <laughs> i love goosebumps i can go on so i'm pumped but i remember when i graduated to fear street like i was a little bit older and the books were a little bit fear thicker. Street was very teenager and you're like yeah, yes I'm and i remember like now mom them to like just Describing the girl, I painted my nails black today. And I'm like, I want to paint my nails black. But I also read Babysitter's Club and American Girls, so I never went full horror. That's fair. But there's there's some good horror out there, by the way. Speaking of Hulu, uh, No One Will Save You, apparently, is getting a lot of buzz. It came out this weekend. 
and I haven't watched it yet. However, I probably will tonight. It's about aliens, I guess. I don't know. I don't really know what the plot is. All I know is it's got really rave reviews as far as horror movies go. So I'm going to watch you, that. Have you seen the pictures of the, the supposed real alien? And then oh, people God, are like, yeah. is it cake? And they're like cutting it. It's cake. Like, I love that on. show. <laughs> oh, my God. I have seen that, that alien in Mexico. But anyways. Yeah. Let's roll into our main topic. We're going to be talking Gen V. So excited for this. Is the latest Amazon Prime show set in the boys universe. It's coming out this week on Amazon Prime, like I said. So let's roll into that now. It if you're really- watching on the YouTube, I will occasionally pull up some pictures for some little eye yeah. candy there. Well, it's believed. And also, side note real quick, uh, check our Instagram because Lauren will probably be sharing stuff all week long from that. And on Twitter, I whatever's left of Twitter, I will there. I need to get better about blue. Especially if the strike threads, is over. Yeah, we'll because we'll be I've been holding back. It. Yeah, we'll be talking about it. So rolling into this, it's believed that Gen V, which is the boys' spinoff coming out September 9th, will actually be based on 29th issue. That's why I said September 29th, didn't I? I heard September 9th. You could have. I don't know. Okay. I'm tired. It is believed that Gen V, the boys spinoff coming out on September 29th, will be based on the seven issue part of the boys comic called We Gotta Go Now, which covered issues 23 to 29 in the comic, which is by Garth Ennis and also a past guest of the show, Derek Robertson. However, this is what happened in those seven issues. The show is going to veer pretty far from the comic book. So we have some speculation that Jensen has says that soldier boy is going to be showing up and uh, Jack's going to be in this as well. You haven't met Jack yet. Jack shows up in season 13. Yes. Well, we also don't know if soldier boy. (laughs) So Alex Colbert, Alex Colbert. All right. Well, we don't know. I'm a little concerned that it's, it's not a real show up that it's going to be like, a video or like a clip well, or something like those that. Up and yeah, he's like probably like a TV ad or something. Yeah. He is credited for being on the show and his name's Ben. I don't know if that was soldier boy's real name. I don't, I don't know. So we shall see how that works out. Uh, and again, like with me saying, you know, the comic may be very far off from the show. Soldier boy is nothing like he is in the comic than he is in the show. So they may go completely off the rails they may follow it, it along. It does look like but... going off the rails pretty hard. You know, I agree. It's just how crazy and gory it's looking up to be. And it, it looks like to be a very good show. But they, this is what they're saying it might loosely be based on. And if you do want to read it, it is in the second omnibus. And uh, yeah, I think we cover what issues it is. Issues 23, 23 to 29. 29. Yeah, you said that. All right. So All right, let's do everybody this. should know that before going into the comic, Compound V is very different in the show versus in the comic book. You don't actually have to take it as a baby in the comic book, and it doesn't kill you if you take it later. Like in the show, it's killing Huey Butcher. Butcher. That's not the case in the comic book. So this issue, this uh, story arc pretty much deals with the G-Men. This is a direct mockery of the X-Men, who are they're run by a guy named John Godalkin. In the show, the young soups are attending Godalkin University. John Godalkin. God bless. Man. It is a hard one. Even just typing it, I kept typing it wrong because it's G O D O L K I N. That's show, fine. We can call him John G. <laughs> doesn't he has his own mansion where he claims to adopt orphans and then trains them to be superheroes? There are many groups of the G Men, but the main G Men live in the mansion, which is complete with a danger gym. And now some of these sounds familiar. The does some of these groups are G Force, G Style, derivative Coast, and G Wiz. Take a drink oh, every time you hear the word G something, right? G spot. I was about to say that. <laughs> the G men aren't for special mission missions like Payback, which is Soldier Boy's team, or the Seven. They're the money maker. Their comics alone make them a billion dollars a year. And in the comics, the legend Paul Reiser's character actually runs a comic book shop and basically spins the stories to make the soup seem like superheroes. So it's fake news, but he's actually kind of a good guy who works with the boys and utilizes his ties with Vought to do so. So Lauren, why don't you take us into the first issue, which is issue 23. We got to go now, part one. So the issue starts with a G-man named Silver Kincaid looking for, quote, Uncle Paul, but she seems like a little bit out of it. And she's in some random little town. It then appears that she kills herself using her own powers. And then we cut to Rainer and Butcher at a coffee shop. Rainer is a CIA person whose head exploded in the show. But in the comic, her and Butcher regularly have very angry hate sex. Like they're really mean to each other while they're doing it. Um, And they then after their talk, they just do it in a public restroom because, you know, why not? 
Uh, so Rainer tells Butcher that they went to get the body of Silver Kincaid and Vout had beat them to it. So in the comics, the CIA actually kind of works with the boys, which, you know, we started to see that later on in the in the show. But it's it was different in the comic. Um, and Rainer thinks Vout or G-Men killed Silver Kincaid because she got in their way of making money. So she wants the boys to look into it. Since it's difficult to get cameras into the G-Men mansion, Huey goes undercover and his name is Bagpipe. He's Scottish in the comics and uh, the legend even makes a comment. He's like, have you heard that kid try to do an American accent? I had to make him Scottish. Like he, he just couldn't, you know, do the American accent. Um, so that's basically what happens in part one. I'm not you really take sure also two? how much Huey and the crew are going to show up in this show at all. Because like we said, preface. Yeah, I don't think they're going to. They're going to take a lot of liberties with the show. It's going to be more focused on these college kids and what goes on there. So in issue... Well, and just real quick, the seven is not the primary focus of the comics. It's just one of the groups of soups in there, whereas in the TV show, obviously, they've decided to focus on the right. seven. Because it, it, and... it's too messy if you start to all these groups and everything like that. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, and you know, you get invested in characters and it's harder for them to, to make us so invested in all these characters. Right. But, but they've done such a great job with the seven. Absolutely right. agreed. So in part two, which is issue 24, it starts with a toga party, which is straight out of Animal toga, House. If toga. everybody remembers that. It's at the G Wiz house where Huey is now undercover. The legend helped to make this happen. The house is basically a frat house for the incoming G-Men. They're supposed to be getting a real life experience, but literally all they do is get wasted and do some sex stuff everywhere, including their porn room, which every frat house obviously has. And this is where Huey first learns- Sticky floors gross it was shower jellies <laughs> Ew. <laughs> this is where huey first learns that most of them were recruited as kids one of the activities the g whiz crew enjoy doing is pranking the seven tower and of course the seven do not react very well and i'm interested to see i i feel like i i saw rumors that homelander is going to appear which i would be very surprised if he doesn't i feel like he's going to give some speeches at the college in the show that makes like sense very vot you know homelander and we know do and we know there's a lost, you know, lawsuit going, not a lawsuit, a criminal case kind of going on right now because we've seen that on yeah. social media after Homelander killed the the one guy at the rally. Yep. Um, but the joke was pretty funny. They like call the Homelander and they're like, "Is Mr. Wall there?" And he's like, "No." And he's like, "Well, what about Mrs. Wall?" No, buddy, you got the wrong number. And he's like, "Well, are there any walls there?" And he's like, "You have the wrong number. There's no walls here." He's like, "Then how's the roof staying up for something stupid?" <laughs> and Homelander gets all Homelander and gets very angry. I will fucking I find you and kill you. Show. I would love to see that in the show. God, I want yeah. something like that so bad. Well, <laughs> Mother's Milk is off investigating the death of, of Silver Kincaid, which then cuts to Terror eating a comic book that says Detective Comics at the top. Bingo. The legend says it's fine. Not even subtle. And then we get He's just chewing on the comic in the comic shop. And it's the legend's awesome. like, eh, it's fine. He can eat the Detective Comics. Yes. Right. And it's always funny. Everyone's always bashing on Detective Comics. It's never Marvel you see in these. I wonder if because Marvel might sue or is, I don't know. No, they mock Marvel too. There's something straight out of, I remember talking to Derek Robertson about it, where like a Wolverine attacks somebody and they're right. like, well, that's maybe right. it was the best at what he does. That's right. Because that's now, supposed to be a joke. Back to Huey, who goes with the G Wiz kids to the G Men mansion, where they are greeted by John G himself. <gasps> Dun, dun, dun. who looks nothing like Professor X. So issue number 25, part three, one of the pages at the beginning is actually a beer ad featuring the G-Men, and it says it's a, quote, powerful lager. Um, Elizabeth Shue's character, Madeline Stilwell, is actually a dude in the comics named James Stilwell, and he is very concerned about John G, as he thinks he's starting to go a bit crazy and go a little too far off the rails. So back at the mansion, Huey's there with the other G-Wiz kids, Every time I say G-Wiz now, I want to be like, G-Wiz, oh golly. I know, right? <laughs> Huey is planting bugs and runs into a resurrected Nubia who is a drooling drooling and mumbling, and she's saying, kill me. Um, he's seen a resurrected suit before. Actually, in the comics, they resurrected Lamplighter, but when they resurrect them, they are just like zombie shells of what they were. And he stupidly mentions that he's seen a resurrected suit before. John G says he uh, keeps her around because like all the G men, she is his child. So he acts like he's very caring of these kids and whatnot. When obviously it, it almost makes me think of like when professor X blocked Jean Grey's powers without telling her, like he's right. trying to control everything, but he acts like he cares. Whereas obviously this is very different because I feel like this guy's pure evil and professor X is not. But So back at the G Wiz uh, frat house, Huey walks in on a group who are jerking each other off while watching porn in the porn room. And that's well, how that issue ends. Uh, it's very interesting. Like 
interesting this fascination with this kind of stuff, right? Like it's very interesting. Like we had the, you know, uh, hero gasm, and now we have. And the hero gasm like, was mild in the show. It really was. It's it's very very interesting how they just continuously keep doing. It. But hey, you know what? Maybe that's what celebrities do. Maybe they know something we don't know. I don't know. Now, in issue 26, part four, Huey lets Butcher know that the G-Men basically hate each other. However, G-Wiz are actually all friends, and he'd like to stay longer, potentially help them not all turn into super douchebags. Butcher's response is, don't fall in love with a stripper, but okays him for staying on a bit longer. And I can also attest to that, Butcher. I've seen too many people actually marry strippers, and uh, it never turns out well. I just love how Butcher talks. Like, I think he's done a great job, like going from comic to screen. Oh, yeah. I think. Uh, oh, Carl Urban's amazing. Yeah, man. Carl he's Urban has done a fantastic such, job. And it's a shame that we've never gotten a uh, Judge Dredd sequel, which we so heartedly deserve because he was fantastic in that. And he was great in Star Trek. And, you know, if Carl Urban's on the screen, you, you're getting some killer ass action. And he's amazing. Right. And he does, you know, so many different characters so well. But oh, Butcher. Yeah. It's like there's to come across like you have charisma and then have see you next Tuesday in your regular vocabulary at the same time, but not seem like a misogynistic dick. It's like, how, how do you do that? Like, (laughs) well done. Exactly. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's what's going on now. And that one was a less there's, yeah, I'm looking down now and there's a picture of Huey and Annie having sex outside on a blanket as one does. Of course. Issue number 27, part five. See, I didn't add those little things. It's not really, I don't think we're going to see that happen in Gen V, maybe in the future. I don't either. So uh, MM, Mother's Milk, is still investigating the Silver Kincaid death, and he manages to find a guy in the town where Silver Kincaid killed her, quote, killed herself, whose brother, or he founds a guy who's living there, and his brother's name is Paul. This, quote, Uncle Paul lost the guy's daughter years before, which led to Uncle Paul's suicide. And her name was Grace, and it was Silver Kincaid. She had been kidnapped. So he was inside the ice cream shop. They just got an ice cream or something, and he comes out, and she's gone. And what's funny about this is how like they kind of put it together is Silver Kincaid is called that because she has silver hair. Like, it went gray. And the dad's telling the story that she was on, like, a horse or something, and the horse took off, and she was so scared that her whole hair, like, the next day was gray. Like, that that's a thing that happens. Like, it was, she was so stressed that this child's hair turned gray the next day but so then you know mm sees a picture of her and it's a dead ringer you're not even gonna confuse this but wouldn't he have i mean i guess if he had known before and tried to do something that would have shut him up or whatever but um okay so then they after that scene they cut to saint patrick's day G Wiz is all dressed in green and they're getting completely shit faced off green beer like the pictures in the comic are just absolutely ridiculous people are doing things they shouldn't do there's assault going on in the streets there's green puke everywhere it is ridiculous so it's bourbon street <laughs> yes it's bourbon street uh and there's butcher though is inside a legit irish pub that is kicking anyone out who is dressed in green and if you request a shamrock on your guinness the guy instead writes fuck off as he has perfected the tap handle so well he can write fuck off nice. in the head uh, Butcher pulls Huey away from the festivities with G-Wiz and pulls him into the pub and tells him, like, you're done with the undercover project. It's getting too hot, so to speak. Yeah, you know, with with all this Huey undercover, I I feel like they have to play that at some part. But I don't know, because when we left the boys last, like, they were recovering from taking Compound V and right. there was no plot to do this. So it's very interesting how they're really going to do this show again. I'm, I'm convinced it's just going to be f- based on the college kids and maybe down the road after season, what are we on three or four of the boys? I think that at this, they'll probably like intertwine them, but we're yeah. not going to get any of this undercover stuff this season. Yeah, probably not. Well, issue six, or I should say issue 28 part six still well is on the phone with John G who is telling Stillwell He wants to resurrect silver Kincaid while st- talking to Stillwell. He hears kids. He's not very pleased as they had discussed no more kidnapping of kids. He, his response at this point was basically that he doesn't answer to Vought. Stillwell then tells him to bury Kincaid and move on. And then we see him looking at a picture of Huey. Now back at silver Kincaid's funeral, all the G men are there with all of their side groups who all hate each other during the funeral. Many are getting high and shit talking and Huey is even there. Although butcher told him very clearly not to be. 
and Huey's Damn really it, Huey. not listening. He's always not listening. Never listens. Get himself Huey's killed. Is then talking with Huey, telling him that they're all sad that one day they'll be split up and have to join the G Men type teams that they all hate. After the funeral, we see Huey's undercover is blown. Vought wants him alive, although John G says he'll not kill him if they let him resurrect Silver Kincaid. So G Wiz goes on to attack Huey at the order of John G. Huey tries to reason with them as he really just sees them as victims, but the boys show up and Kamiko kills all but one. Dun, dun, dun. She rips them to shreds. I love it. Mother's Milk then reveals that with the help of the legend, he for more. He he got more files. So the legend, because he still has contacts, he was able to like get a password so MM could get into Vought's, Vought's files. And he you know was able to get like six files before they caught him or changed the password or whatever to block him out yeah. so the legend kind of like he i don't think he plays both sides he seemed a little bit sleazier in the show um but in the comic he seems like he's on the side of the boys but he works for about about Vought and is able to use his position of power to do good right. but i don't think anybody is completely innocent in the comic except huey and annie no. well i don't even think he i mean to a degree huey's not either just the stuff that he's done but it turns out in this issue that all of the kids were actually kidnapped as children and none of them were actually orphans, which leads us into the conclusion. We got to go now. So in the last issue of this, we got to go now. We start with a letter from John G to about back in 1984. He's basically pitching them a new program that will make them money. He says this program will make you more money than payback, which is soldier boys group. And the seven has ever made. And this is of course the proposal for the now G men. So now we cut to the G Wiz hostage situation that we were left in in the last issue. And the boys have taken, they left one guy alive. He is their hostage. They're asking him questions to get more info. Um, he said that they were not taken violently, that John G basically lures them away with candy toys and the promise of becoming a superhero. So instead of just snatching, they're like, hey, come into my white van that says free candy on the side. Um, and they, uh, he also says that he has a very calming, reassuring voice, perhaps much like Sir Patrick Stewart. However, a few days later, when the kids are like, hey, I want to go home. I want my mom. They are, of course, told no. And some of the kids who don't like that answer get, quote, taken care of. Uh, the compound V shots begin sh uh, shortly thereafter, and they do those weekly until powers show up, which is not always successful. Um, Jamal, which is the name of the hostage, then talks about having to do certain things he did not want to do they're kind of hinting at murder and pedophilia so there's a lot of they weren't very clear on that but you, you know this guy's kidnapping kids and then other kids are getting taken care of so i mean i guess maybe garth ennis does have a line and maybe that was the line <laughs> um so and then he says that as they get older they realize they're not actually superheroes they're just getting paid a lot of money to pretend to be so they party a lot to deal with it. And basically the G men exist to kill other G men who step out of line. They're not really saving anything. And we did see that in the show when they had like a scheduled thing with Annie and the deep. Um, so enter a G man soup who instantly kills Jamal. He says something like he like blast him and he's like silence is golden or something like that. Um, and then we see what looks like a bizarro version of the X-Men group, all wanting to kill the boys. And Huey goes charging, even though it's like the five boys to 50 soups and looks like, okay, well, there's there's no way this is going to end well. But then Vought actually shows up with an army and just completely slaughters all of the G-Men. So it was kind of like, well, how is this going to end? Because, you know, they're not going to kill your main characters. Right, and then it was like the scene in, um, was it the end or, or the Lost World? What's with the Jurassic Park? With, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, where, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she, your friend called the Navy? Yes. So it's kind of like that. And then the is issue ends with Stillwell telling Butcher, quote, just so you know, we can clean up our own shit, end quote, to which Butcher replies, fuck me. Yeah. But, you know, uh, in his Butcher accent. Very interesting. And now issue 30 is not part of the overall storyline. However, it starts with the news explaining that the G-Men travel to another dimension to fight evil forever in order to protect Earth. Then the worst part is that we actually see a group of super kids called pre Wiz, which I didn't realize, you know, that's pretty a gross name. I had like read that. And then when I'm rereading these, I'm like, oh, that's disgusting. Yeah. Yeah. Like ugh. now the kids are in a dark room, all terrified. One kid gets them all excited by saying that they're superheroes and they should stop the bad guys meeting Vought. And then like these kids are like crying and they're terrified as they should be again. And then you see a box falling out of the back of the plane that clearly has the kids in it. So yeah, the, the boys, man, this is a not for faint of heart 
story, Gen V is not going to be, again, it's going to be very brutal. This, this entire boys universe is absolutely just fucking brutal, man. It is rough. I do wonder, like, I feel like they might get more comic book accurate just from the one trailer I watched from how like gruesome it is. And I also feel like, you know, I've seen the interviews with Kripke where like the scene of Homelander, you know, taking care of himself at the end of season two, he wanted that in one and prime was like, no. So they're wearing away at prime. I think because they're getting a lot of views and a lot of people are watching. So they're like, okay, these people want the gross, nasty stuff, but the comic is so, so I know we've said this multiple times, but it's so much worse and far out there than, than the show, which is just, yeah. Like the show is even more tame than what you get in a comic book. So if you want to go read these comic books, just know, like it gets pretty, pretty fucked up, man, to put it slightly. It's sometimes it's one of those things that you have to really have a palate cleanser after reading an issue or two. I, when I was reading like the boys, I could never do more than a few issues in a row before I was like, all right, I need to put this away. Yeah. Me go read something else or go do. Cause it was just like, God dang, man. Yeah. My cousin borrowed the first omnibus when I offered the second, she's like, I'm good. Yeah. Well, even with the show, like I'm glad it releases weekly because it's not something I could just sit there and binge because it's so there's like that heaviness to it and very, it's not seriousness that it is, but again, it's just very just fucked. I don't Creepy. know how else to put it, but it's, it's fucked. <laughs> But, it is fucked. Yeah, but they do a good job. They do a great job. It's a great comic book. We're very well written, very well drawn, and then the show is obviously very well acted, very well written. It's a very great production, and so I'm excited to watch Gen V just because I, I we get to play in this world more and kind of see what's going to happen. I don't think I think they're going to take liberties, but I think the main story points I do feel like they're going to hit in some capacity. Yeah, I I think so too. But when I was looking at the cast, when I saw that they you know had Jensen Ackles listed. I was expecting names to sound familiar and like the main characters, those names didn't sound familiar. I don't know if I missed something or what, but I expected to be like, Oh, there's this kid that's, you know, in the G wizard, or there's this, you know, you know, silver Kincaid or whatever. And I didn't see that, but they also didn't have their soup names listed. They just had regular names listed. Um, Well, the one kid, when he killed Jamal and he goes, silence is gold. And there is somebody called golden boy. So I'm wondering if that's going to be the same guy. I really have no clue, but I mean, even in the show, yeah. In the show, they switched some of the seven like you like, um, yeah. you know, was it the Mar- Martian guy? He's in the seven. And we haven't seen him, well, but they've done also, a lot of obviously the big reveal at the end of the boys is I very. I feel like they're I, I'm not going to talk about it right because it goes into spoilers, but yeah, there's they, they they take liberties, but I think they they hit the main points. And then, of course, and that's as a comic book reader, you don't want them to follow exactly to a t because then that's too predictable and you're not going to really you're going to know what's coming and that makes it less fun no i agree and that's one of the things i love about the mcu that sometimes gets me a little whatever about dc is sometimes you know what's coming because you know it's nice to have nods to things but when you're just ripping it straight out it's not as much fun yeah make it your Uh, own but i did think that clancy brown was going to be the john godlinkin person especially when I was reading this and or rereading this storyline last week. And it said that, you know, he had a smooth, calming voice. I was like, Oh, I could totally see that. Yeah. But then it doesn't, he's like the representative of the God Lincoln university. So I, I'm not it's sure if fake out. John God Lincoln is still alive. It could be. Yeah. Well, they could so be, I don't really, yeah. but the fact that it's a university too, and not an orphanage is different. Like right away, that's different. So we I'm shall pumped. see. I guess we'll yeah. see. Let us know what your predictions are for the show as you've heard ours and we want to hear yours. So come hang out with us. Follow us as always. This has been Gen V your pre-show for the upcoming Amazon prime TV series. And Lauren, do you have any final things you want to leave? Long live soldier boy. There we go. Jensen, save us, baby. Please be, please be like the DCU Batman, but that's neither here nor there. Yes. Start a petition. We'll see you guys next time as we're going to be diving into our spooky season content. It's October. Spooky, We'll be diving in there. If there's something you guys want to see us do, come by all means, let us know. And until next time, cheers.